Hi, welcome to another video by myself, Rob Allen. Today we're going to do a shoot on snap clips. We're going to show the do's and don'ts and we're going to do some brake testing of them. I'll show you these now. Snap clips seem to have started from fishing. This is a smaller type that's used for fishing. You can see the ring at the end is quite open. That does tend to load more. And if you force it, it can end up stretching that way and eventually it fails. Also on this type, the ring to hold is fine on a light one like these. But when we use a conventional snap clip, it's better to have the ring orientated sideways so you've got more control of the clip twisting. This is more or less what most of the guys use. This one can be problematic. If I put the line into it, we now have your shooting line attached. If by chance this twists, it can hook up and stay hooked in that position. The problem with that is the moment you load it up or shoot a fish, it can force that shank down and bend. A couple of fish have been lost because of the clip being destroyed purely by the way it's clam clamped up. The snap clip we make has a, an angled tag end and as soon as the line hooks up there, as soon as you put any tension, it pulls back. It cannot foul itself at the top. Very important on clips. Good clips are made from spring steel wire. These are quite hard to open and close. That's because the wire itself is spring steel. Most stainless spring steels is 304. I have made, this is 316, I've just bent this one up by hand. This specific one looks very similar if you make it the same as that, but the wire itself is a lot softer. An easy way to tell them apart is by using a magnet. The non, the non spring steel is not magnetic, this being a magnet. As soon as I put it onto the 304, because it's work hardened, it is slightly magnetic. Conventional steel, like a steel key, very magnetic. Three one, uh, 304 stainless, lightly magnetic. 316, totally non-magnetic. When we make these clips, we're very careful to make sure the wound piece is not sharp. It is cut off very close to the shank, as well as the folded back tag end. No sharp edges to hook on anything, cut your hands, very streamlined and safer to use. Okay, we had our testing station. We're now going to first test the 316 non-spring steel snap clip. Here it is here. It's attached one side by a muzzle shackle and the other side by two millimeter stainless steel cable. And we're going to load it until it breaks. Let's see what we get up to. Go for it, Mike. As you can see, 80 kilos are starting to stretch. Keep going. Hundred kilos is distorting. Go a little bit further. Hundred and thirty. It hasn't actually broken, but it is pretty strong. Stronger than the mono would be anyway but not something we would like to put on the gun. Okay, let's back her off. As you can see, 316, not the greatest. Being non-spring steel, we also have a weak point here every time it's flexed on, open and closed. But eventually that will snap there. We now have our spring steel, stainless steel snap clip together with our brass swivel 
and it's linked on both sides by two millimeter cable. We're going to stress it now and see what we get up to. We're already way over the other before it starts to distort. We're there 200. And now she starts to slip at 220. So as you can see, much stronger than conventional 316 non-spring stainless. Well over 200. If you recall our mono testing, that would go at about 120. So this is more than double. So in terms of strength, the snap clip is way stronger than the mono. Well, there you have it. The actual crimp itself did distort quite a bit. The swivel broke, and you would have seen at what pressure that broke at. And uh, the swivel was the weak point in this case. And there you have it. That's how we test our swivels and clips.